All right, so here we have, you can see one, two, three, four, five quadratic expressions. Quadratic because they're x squared. So ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, we're going to look at the first one. That's the easiest type of quadratic to factor. Um, this is one where a equals 1. So when a equals 1 on a quadratic, all you do is look for factors of c that add up to b. So factors of negative 24 that add up to 2. And that's 6 and negative 4. So this would just simply factor into 6, x plus 6, positive 6, and x minus 4. That's it. Now check your work. Foil it out to make sure you get what you started with. You can do that in your head. Um, x squared plus 6x minus 4x is plus 2x and minus, or plus 6 times a negative 4, which is negative 24. So that multiplies out to this. So that's a pretty easy one. Um, the next one we're going to look at is this one. Now this one's also a quadratic, but now a is not 1, it's 10. So there's two ways to do this problem. Uh, well, there's more than two ways, but the, the ways you've probably learned are first way is the first and second way you want to multiply a times c together. So it's called the a times c method. So 10 times a negative 12. And you find factors of that that up to the middle term, which is a negative 7. And after you're, uh, you think about it for a while, maybe take out your calculator or just all the possibilities, uh, negative 8 times, or Negative 15 times 8 is negative 120, and negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. So that will work. They do have to add up to the middle term. But now you can't just write x minus 15, x plus 8 like you did the last one. So the first method is this. Replace that middle number, negative 7, with the negative 15 plus 8. They need an x because you have to make it sum up to negative 7x because that's what you're replacing. So that's what we did. We replaced the negative 7x with the sum of these two x's. And then factor by grouping. First two factors factor a common factor, and that's going to be 5x. Uh, the second two, the common factor is a 4. Now, this last binomial here will be the exact same thing as this one, if you did it right. And it is. So now the next thing to do is to factor out the 2x minus 3. So you'll be left with 5x plus 4. Now you're done. Foil this out, it should equal that 10x squared minus 7x minus 12. Now, the other way to do it, and the way I like to do it, is start out the same way. So, we're going to, we always start out with a times c, and we always look for factors of the a times c to add up to the middle term. Now, the shortcut here is do it just like if, as if it would, a was 1. In other words, just write those factors down next to these x's. x minus 15, x plus 8. But then, put both those numbers over A. And then reduce. So, negative 15 over 10 reduces it to 3 halves. And 8 over 10 reduces to 4 fifths. And then take the bottom of those fractions and move them in front of the x. So this would be 2x minus 3. And this would be 5x plus 4. And you can see it works. We got the same thing. So 
So the next one. Whoa. We took care of this. Took care of this. The next one is just like this one. You can just do 9 times 25 and factors and five factors of that that add up to negative 30. Um, that's a lot, but you can do it that way. The other way is this is a special type of factoring. This is a special type of quadratic. It's called a perfect square trinomial. And you know it's a perfect, tri a perfect square trinomial if... First and last terms are perfect squares, and they are. So 9x squared is a perfect squared because it's 3x quantity squared. 25 is a perfect squared because it's 5 squared. Now, if you multiply those two terms, the 3x and the 5, and then double it, it's a perfect square trinomial um, if that result is that middle term. In other words... 5 times 3x is 15x. 15x doubled, or just times 2, is 30x. That's the middle term. So you know this is a perfect square trinomial. So it just factors like this. Um, this sign right here can be negative or positive. If it's whatever it is, that's what you put here. So this term must always be positive for a perfect square trinomial or that sign must always be positive. This can be positive or negative, but it will always just translate to that sign. So that's how you do that one. Now you could have done nine times 25, which I'm gonna do right now. It was 225. And then factors of 225 that add up to negative 30 um, let's see, 225, okay, or 15 and 15, so negative 15, oh no, that's, yeah, negative 15 and negative 15, so you would have, um, x minus 15, x minus 15, put them over 9, Reduce the fractions. So this is 3x minus 5 times 3x minus 5. So obviously, it's the same thing as this. You don't have to realize it's a perfect square trinomial, but if you can, it makes it easier. So that's that. The next one is this one. Now this one you have to be very, very, very careful with. Um, you can just go right ahead and do 4 times negative 24. Which is negative 96. And factors of negative 96 that add up to negative 4 are negative 12 and 8. And then you can try to do this. I'm going to do it like this by grouping. 4x squared minus 12x plus 8x minus 24. Factor out a common factor. 4x, x minus 3. 8 times x minus 3. And you get 4x plus 8 times x minus 3. Uh, now, you're not done, though, because 4x minus 8 has a common factor. So you have to factor that out. Now you're done. Now, here's a, the big thing here is it would have been a lot easier to factor out a 4 first. So that's why I have included this one. We're going to do it like that. If you factor out a 4 first... Then you have this quadratic, and all you're doing is now a is 1, so you have to find factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 1, and that's negative 3 and positive 2. So that's much easier. But here's the 
biggest word of warning. If you want to do the other type of factoring, the A times C, if you don't factor out the common factor, so I'm going to do X minus 12 times X plus 8, and I have to put them both over 4. You get X minus 3 and X plus 2. It doesn't work because this doesn't factor into X minus 3, X plus 2. It factors into 4 times X minus 3 times X plus 2. So the moral of the story is this. If you're going to factor this one, you always must make sure that you factor out a common factor first. But even if you're factoring this way, you can see it's always easiest to factor out a common factor first. So always look for a common factor first. The last one. The last one is called a difference of squares. Um, first and last terms are perfect squares and this is a minus and this has to be a minus it always difference of squares always factor like this this is the square root of the first term and this is the square root of the last term you're, and you're done but still it's a quadratic so you can always think of it like this there is no X. So you can multiply 4 times a negative 81. And that's negative 324. And find factors of negative 324 that add up to 0. So I'm going to look for those quickly. Still searching. Should I know this? Uh, negative 18 plus 8. So this is negative 18 times 18. So when you factor this, you can go, I'm going to do it the x minus 18 x plus 18, but there was a 4, so I have to put them both over 81. Um, 9 goes into 81 and 18, so this would be x equals, oops, x minus 2 over 9, x minus 2 over 9, x plus 2 over 9. Bring the 9s up, and you get the correct factoring. Obviously, using difference of squares is a much easier, quicker way to do this. But it is a quadratic, so you can do it with any type of quadratic factoring. So that's your quick review on factoring. Um, practice if you need to. And ask me if you need to. Thanks for watching.